I'm Emily Moshak, and you're listening to Tuned Into NoCo, Town Square Media show that lets you know what matters in NoCo. I'm talking today with Amy Pisani, the CEO of the Food Bank for Larimer County, about Town Square Cares Feeding NoCo, a promotion we are hosting this holiday season to raise money for the Food Bank for Larimer County and Weld Food Bank for families in need here in NoCo. So thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much. Of course. But before we get into Town Square Cares, I would love to learn just a little bit about you. I know you've been involved with the food bank for a long time. How did you find your way there? So when I graduated from college in the 1990s, I really wanted to be a VISTA volunteer. VISTA is um, Volunteers in Service to America. It's sort of the domestic branch of the Peace Corps. And um, it's now part of AmeriCorps, which people sometimes know a little bit better. And so I applied to be a VISTA volunteer, and I was placed at a food bank. Prior to that, I did not know what, I didn't know about food banks. I didn't know what they did. But I did understand struggle. Um, When I left home, I put myself entirely through college. Um, I did not have family support um, because my family didn't have the resources for that. And uh, there were often times where um, I was working three jobs, going to school full time, my car would break down and I would be panicked about how I was going to fix it because I needed that car to get to work to pay for school. And so um, being at the food bank, I learned more, of course, about the specific issue of hunger. And also when I was in college, I did access uh, SNAP benefits. At the time, they were called food stamps. And that was a lifesaver for me because I was able to go to the store and buy what I wanted with those benefits um, and um, money that I made at my job than I could spend on that um, car or on rent. And so um, I got into it then as a VISTA volunteer. Um, I built programs um, at that food bank. This was in Springfield, Missouri. And then the uh, director at the time ended up hiring me on staff. And then after three years, um, I actually applied to be the executive director and um, was hired to do that job, was there for four years, um, then moved out to Colorado, did a couple other things, but was really fortunate enough to get back into the world of food banking um, 17 years ago and um, have been at it ever since. Um, I love the support of our community and uh, what we do for the community. And going off of that issue of hunger, I think people, that doesn't come to mind when they think of Larimer County, you know, you think of Old Town, Fort Collins, things like that. But how big of an issue is food insecurity actually here in Larimer County? Well, prior to the pandemic, um, one in seven children in the U.S. were at risk of hunger. And in 2020, that figure increased to one in six children being at risk of hunger. Um, The USDA reported on September 8th that 38 uh, million Americans live in food insecure households, but specific to Larimer County, a recent report from Feeding America showed that food insecurity in Larimer County has risen by an estimated 27% this year. And so when we look at food insecurity in Larimer County, it, it does look different sometimes in other parts of the country. In other um, parts of the country, you might have um, lots of issues around equity um, um, and racial diversity. Um, And it's not that that doesn't exist in Larimer County, but in in Larimer County, a lot of the individuals that we are serving most, in fact, um, are working. And so um, it really has to do with the increased cost of living and um, Wage is not rising at the same pace. And then, of course, in the last year with COVID, um, many people losing work, getting back to work, but also food prices across the country have been raising and rents continue to raise and or rise, I'm sorry. And so um, that contributes to folks really not having enough money to make ends meet. And they can come to the food bank and they can get um, a lot of nutritious food for free when they need it for their family. Now we're approaching the holiday time. Do you see an increase in food insecurity around this time, or is it the same? What does that look like? We actually don't see an increase, and the reason for that is because food insecurity is present and prevalent in our community year-round. 
Um, there's nothing about November that inherently makes food insecurity um, a bigger issue. Um, usually, um, if we see any sort of rise in the numbers, it has more to do on an annual basis with um, uh, folks who are in the trades and who might not have work um, in cold periods of time, so maybe January, February. And then also we um, often see need a little bit higher when uh, kids go back to school um, and there are some additional costs. But generally speaking, the need um, is uh, fairly consistent throughout the year. Now, the last time I was able to talk to you guys at the food bank, it was when the pandemic was really heightened. And I know it was definitely taking a toll on operations. How are things looking now? Well, I'd say we're doing really well. So um, back in March of 2020, yes, the impact was um, very, uh, it happened very quickly to us. And so obviously we didn't have time to prepare for it like anybody else. And at a time where need was increasing, we lost 75% of our volunteer workforce because people were scared, and prudently so. And then um, we also saw the need going up, and we had to figure out how to distribute food in a different way. Um, we were distributing food prior to the pandemic in a grocery store-like setting um, at our food pantries, and then we had to flip that and figure out how to do that in a drive-through distribution. Um, fast forward, um, at the beginning of October, we were finally able to transition our food pantries back to an in-store um, shopping model, a client choice model. And um, it has been wonderful because that allows um, someone who is experiencing hunger to come in and choose what they want. Um, they can get in, they can get out, they can get what they want, um, choose from fresh produce, from dairy products, from some meat products, bread, um, we often have fresh flowers from Trader Joe's as well. And so they can get what they need for their family. In addition to that, because we do understand that there are some people that are still scared to come in and shop or found the drive-up distribution was more convenient due to potentially um, having a disability or having kids in the car, um, we've actually added a curbside pickup option where families can go online and order um, their cart ahead of time and just pick it up in our parking lot at an assigned time. And so um, just like you would at any of the grocery stores. So um, even though we're still getting used to that transition, that has been positive for us. Um, we're happy to be able to talk to um, our clients that come in and interact and um, the outpouring of support from the clients and volunteers has been uh, awesome. I'm glad to hear that things are getting back to normal, turning a corner. And now here at Town Square Media, we're doing Town Square Cares Feeding NoCo. We're encouraging our listeners to donate to the food banks this holiday season. What does this campaign mean to you in the community? How will these donations make an impact? Well, sure. So November is all about the bird. <laughs> it's all about the turkeys. And so um, typically, food banks like ours um, very much uh, ask for support in the form of cash because we get food donated to us. And even though that food is donated, it's not free. We still have a cost to acquire it, but that cost to us is so much lower than you would pay at the store. So for instance, we can acquire produce for about 20 cents a pound. And of course, you could never go to the store, purchase it, and donate it to us for that. So Cash is still um, something that, that we need. However, the exception to the cash rule is always turkeys. And the reason for that is because um, typically grocery stores are selling those at a reduced cost. They're selling those for less than we as a food bank could actually buy them for. So we want the community to support us by bringing us turkeys. So we have had requests for more than 6,500 turkeys from our agency partners this year. And this is by far the highest number we've ever seen. Um, the increase in requests comes as turkeys are unfortunately uh, more difficult to get. Um, due to continued supply chain issues, many stores are placing a limit on the number of turkeys per customer. 
Um, and some stores uh, tell us they're at less than 50 percent of their anticipated turkey capacity right now. Now, we do not want families to have to do without. So in addition to turkeys, we have also asked the communities to step up this year and support us with frozen whole chickens and frozen hams um, that we can provide if uh, we experience this turkey shortage. Um, so that's um, a great way that the community can step up and support. And how can our listeners do that if they want to donate a turkey? What is the best way they can go about that? You bet. So we are collecting those turkeys right now. And the best way that they can get those to us uh, starting now is that they can uh, bring them directly to uh, two of our locations, either our Fort Collins Fresh Food Chair at 1301 Blue Spruce in Fort Collins, or our distribution warehouse at 5706 Wright Drive in Loveland. Um, and then in addition to that, on the 18th of November, we will be um, having our annual um, turkey collection day. Um, in Fort Collins, we will be at the corner of Drake and College in what used to be the Kmart parking lot. Um, and we have trucks and volunteers, and we just have people roll through literally in their cars and take the turkeys out. Um, and then we'll be at the Orchards um, Shopping Plaza in Loveland off of 29th Street. Um, so all day from 8 to 4 um, on, uh, I'm sorry, on November 18th, folks can drop the turkeys off there as well. That's great. And how are you doing in terms of volunteers? Are you looking for volunteers right now? And if so, how can our listeners do that? We are. And uh, the best way for folks to get involved is to start at our website, foodbanklearmer.org, navigate to the volunteer page and uh, sign up with us. As soon as they sign up, we will ask what they're interested in. But I can tell you right now, our greatest need is for volunteers at our Loveland Food Share facility. So that's at 2600 North Lincoln. And those are volunteers that help us um, by stocking shelves, by checking in clients, by helping um, our clients access food um, on a daily basis. And so um, we really are in need of volunteers at that specific location and always accepting volunteers at our other locations. Well, thank you so much, Amy, for taking the time to come in and talk with me today. It was great to hear about how the food bank is doing and how our listeners can help. Is there anything else that you feel like we missed or that you would like our listeners to know? Yeah, we do have a couple additional ways coming up that listeners can support the food bank. Um, we have our Bountiful Boards event coming up on December 4th at the Foothills Unitarian Church. Um, this is an opportunity to support the Food Bank for Larimer County while grabbing a high-quality handmade cutting board or bread board crafted by local woodworkers. And then Colorado Gives Day is on December 7th. This is a huge fundraising day for us and provides critical support for our essential services. You can make a donation early, actually, to, uh, for Colorado Gives Day um, at coloradogives.org backslash FBLC. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much, Amy. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Again, that was Amy Pisani, the CEO of the Food Bank for Larimer County, talking about Town Square Cares Feeding NoCo. You can donate to Town Square Cares on any of your Town Square Media Station apps or by texting Feed NoCo to 50155.